Hey everyone, it is Thursday, 3.30 Eastern, so I am coming to you live from the Hashtag Legal Offices. Um, it's a little echoey in here because we don't have all of our office furniture together yet because we're still trying to get it put together. So we're making do, but it's definitely coming together and I'm really excited about it. It's looking good and we finally have like a really good setup so we can do lots of videos and come to you live as well. So today I want to talk all about contracts. Um, a lot of questions have been coming into the hashtag legal offices asking about going back to work, which is a really exciting but also kind of scary prospect. And I think a lot of people feel overwhelmed. Um, I'm sort of seeing it in two different camps. Uh, I'm seeing the employers. I'm seeing the employees and I'm also seeing contractors. If you're a solo entrepreneur and you are, um, you know, thinking about going back to business and offering services, like, what do you do? Um, and so I kind of wanted to touch on all three of those groups to talk about what you may want to be thinking about um, and whether or not, you know, you're even comfortable going back to work uh, and where you are in your business right now. Lots of people are able to continue to telework, so that's not an issue, but we have lots of clients that are in service businesses that really require you to be in person, like photographers or designers or organizers are great examples of that. We also have clients who have just regular office space and they're really used to being together and kind of miss each other. Um, and there's something to be said for being able to get together and to work together. Um, but obviously we want to balance all of those items with safety um, and following right regulations. So I thought it might be nice if we could kind of come up with a list of things that we are telling our clients that we might be able to, um, for you to think about when you're going on this endeavor of getting back to business. So the first thing that you want to think about when you're all three of those various options is you want to look at what your state is saying. So a big part of this is going to be regulated by the state um, and every state is different. You know, we're sitting here in the New York area. It looks very different here than it does, say, in Georgia or some of the other states. Las Vegas is a great example in Nevada of that, having uh, had some phone calls with the nonprofit that I work for, the Cupcake Girls, they are able to go back to work, um, obviously in a safe way, but we did a board of directors call and people were in the same room. And I will tell you, I felt very, very jealous. Um, they're doing it in a really great way and they're a good example, but lots of states are allowing people to go back to work. So looking at the guidance from your state is really important. Um, almost all states have really good resources for this. So that's one good place to start and the number one place that I would start. The other place that you can look at is the CDC. They are offering guidelines um, written in plain English, which is kind of nice and is also really helpful. Um, and so they're providing some good information uh, and I can certainly provide some good links if people want them, I can drop them in this chat so you can see some places that you may want to look to get some more of that CDC guidance. And the last place to think about, which is a place that uh, an organization or a governmental body that a lot of people haven't really thought about is OSHA. Um, OSHA obviously is dealing with workplace safety uh, among other things and OSHA has guidelines as well and so it is important to consider OSHA as well and the guidance that they've given on going back to work. But the really critical thing about OSHA um, and about all of these guidelines is people are often asking what if I don't feel comfortable or safe going back to work and my employer says that I have to. Um, this is a really complicated question. There is no black and white answer because you have to look at what each individual person is doing. And so you then have to look at what your job is and what it entails, what your employer has put into place for safety purposes, what your individual situation is, um, and then you have to look at whether or not you reasonably feel like it's not safe for you to go back. So it might be a very different story if there's only two of you sitting in an office where you are more than six feet apart, you have the ability to have staggered work schedules versus someone who's required to be on the road on an airplane every single week or in an office with lots of cubicles that are pushed together. Um, so you have to look at the reasonableness of the discomfort, which is obviously not a set standard. So I think that's a conversation to be had with your employer and to look at each individual person. But it is important to note 
that a person cannot be retaliated against um, if they reasonably have uh, an, a complaint about workplace safety under OSHA guidelines. So employees and employers just need to pay good attention to that to make sure that you're not violating that. Um, I believe and uh, the recommendation that I've made to so many of my clients for employers is have a written plan in place. Talk to your employees, have an open dialogue. Start with your state's guidelines, start with the CDC rules um, and go from there. But really look at your individual business, see what makes sense for you. Thank you. Thanks for listening. So think about what makes sense for you, right? So I have a bunch of clients who are interior designers and they need to be in their office together for the way that they do work. And so they've put together a really, really great group of tips um, and a guideline and plan in place, which includes they moved desks to make sure that they have the workspace, staggered start times so that you're maybe not in the office all at the same time, um, trying to do some telework as much as possible or even staggered telework, um, making sure that whoever needs it will have protective gear that they need. That's also really helpful. And so putting those plans in place so that every employee feels comfortable and the employer feels comfortable that both sides are getting what's done that needs to be done. And that I think is really some of the most important items to think about. Uh, being honest, transparency, figuring out a way that the business can both move forward and the employees can feel comfortable is really the best piece of advice. And in doing so, it often means talking to each other. Using those baseline guidelines from the CDC and the state will go a really long way to help you create that written plan. And I 100% recommend creating that written plan. Other things to think about are what are you going to do about sick leave and how are you going to handle paid time off? Are you going to be doing any kind of screening for employees, health screening, whether it's temperature checks? How do you handle confidential health information? That's another important thing to think about. Um, another thing that uh, I have been recommending to lots of clients in um, having these in having these conversations is thinking about what happens in the event uh, an employee does need to quarantine. How are you handling time off there? Um, there's no real set rules right now. Uh, and so looking to your state to see if they've enacted anything special for paid time off um, or whether you even have to, or maybe you want to extend paid time off for such a time. It's totally up, it's often up to you. You should check with your state, like I said. The other group of people that really have been sort of coming around and asking questions are contractors, solo entrepreneurs, freelancers, uh, service professionals. Uh, I've had a number of professionals who not only may have staff they have to worry about, but then they worry about going into someone's home. Uh, photo shoots are a great example and video shoots. So the advice that I've given is again, transparency and honesty but you should consider putting a clause into your contract. It could be a COVID related clause that goes above and beyond the force majeure clause. We talked so much about force majeure and many of my clients have come back and asked for edits to their force majeure clauses, which is a very quick and easy thing to do. Um, oftentimes it's only adding a few extra sentences, a few extra words, or maybe even just a sentence to cover you but also to think about working conditions. What if you show up to a place as a photographer and you don't feel safe, reasonably don't feel safe, you don't wanna be in a position where you have to worry about forfeiting money that's owed to you. So including information about workplace safety, including information about um, waivers. So if you are hosting a group of people and you're giving them the option or the choice, say it's a video shoot and you're providing services that a client comes to you, you may want to consider including waivers in your contract where the client is making an informed decision to come to this photo shoot and they understand and agree that while well, you'll use best efforts to maintain the type of environment that's regulated by the CDC, they also understand that they are assuming that risk. Obviously, this can vary state by state, but it is important and I think it would be really smart thing to talk to your attorney about is including that extra 
I guess we'll call it a COVID clause um, that will protect those service professionals to make sure that you are not, you know, on the hook in case somebody gets sick who was on your video or photo shoot. Uh, so being transparent, talking to your client about that, um, I think that all of that is just really important in order to have a good relationships going forward because then everybody's on the same page. I'm a big fan of trying to get ahead of these things rather than dealing with them on the back end. Thank you. I appreciate it. I'm glad this is great advice. If anybody has any questions, please feel free and drop them in. I am more than happy um, to answer those questions. I know it's a source of anxiety for a lot of people, whether it's employers, employees, service professionals. I think a lot of people really just want to get back to work. <laughs> um, and we're trying to find safe and healthy ways to do that. Um, and so a lot of it is educating yourself. Um, looking, like I said, at those CDC guidelines, checking with, I know OSHA has put out some information, knowing what your expectation of your employees are, and knowing what the expectations of your clients are. So for example, in the case of professional organizers, that's another group of people who I know is often anxious to get back to work because much of the work they do is in people's homes. Um, you may want to have clauses that say, you know, you will be notified in the event somebody in the household is ill um, or has a fever and you will do the same with them. Uh, some people are looking to do testing to see about antibodies. I know that that's not available everywhere and there is health information obviously being passed and forth. So it may not be something that people are doing right now. I have had a few clients ask and raise me about it. I think that's really done on a case by case basis. Um, and so that's important to know, you know, what kind of information is passing forth and make sure that you're obviously safeguarding it and keeping things confidential that need to be confidential. Um, but having that open communication with the client, if you go somewhere and you feel uncomfortable speaking up, um, having the gear that you need or asking your client or provider to provide it for you and also making sure that if you are an organizer that goes to somebody's home and then somebody gets sick that the client understands they're assuming that risk provided you haven't done something negligent or reckless like going there with a fever which I do not recommend doing. Um, so all in all I think a lot of it is common sense. Some of it is just looking at the type of services that you provide, your personal comfort level. This is going to be different for everybody with the baseline being maintained as what, um, what does the CDC say, what does your state say, and what does OSHA say, and sort of springboarding from there. Like I said, many states are doing many different things, and so what may be allowed in one place may not be in others. So it is important to know um, what you should be doing where you are. Um, I think it's going to be a really gradual process. It's a good thing to start the conversation depending on your comfort level um, and to have an understanding of what you your requirements are, what your rights are, having those conversations with employees, with employers, with clients, and really knowing um, and talking to your attorney to get advice that's specific to your business. Every business is different. There's really no one size fits all. There are some good resources out there that have very generalized plans. Um, and I think those are great places to start. Um, but I really want everybody to really be thinking about their specific business, the services that they offer, the needs of their employees and their clients. Um, and then I think you'll feel a lot more comfortable. One of the things that I've learned in my practice, having done this for the last 15 years, is the thing that causes most anxiety is lack of knowledge. So educating yourself a little bit as to what those rights are, of what your rights are, what the rights of the people around you, whether they're employees, your employer or your client, and really thinking about what is reasonable in connection with both your employer, if you're an employee, um, and your clients, because that's really the standard by which a lot of these things are governed by, reasonableness. Um, and so having all of that information will let you and help you get to the right place that makes sense for you and your business. So if anybody has any questions or needs any further information about this, I hope this was very helpful. Contracts can often feel really overwhelming, particularly when we have a topic that just is so new and it's constantly changing. The states are changing, the federal government is changing, and so much information is being thrown out at us. 
So look at your sources. Um, sources are important to know where information is coming from. If you see it on Facebook, it may not be true. <laughs> um, and so just know, uh, make sure whoever you're talking to and is giving you advice has, has good information that they can provide. Um, I think there's some good, uh, there's probably some good information I'll be able to provide. So I'll drop those links uh, a little bit later after we're all done. And like I said, you can always email us info at hashtag dash legal, all spelled out dot com if you have any specific questions. And like I said, I'm going to go live every Thursday, 3.30 on Thursdays. So if you want to see a specific topic, please feel free and let us know. Um, we post in on our Instagram channel and uh, hashtag underscore legal. And we also post on YouTube. If you search Jamie Lieberman, you'll find us pretty easily. Um, lots of content and we'd love to create it for something that you may love to hear. So thank you for listening. I hope this was helpful and gave you a bit of a place to start. Um, I'll try to find some more resources for everyone that I know come from a good place. And uh, good luck. I hope to hear in the next couple weeks that those success stories from clients who are able to start bridging that gap and go back to work. I've had already some that have been great and it's been exciting to hear. So have an awesome rest of your Thursday.